Welcome to Policy on Demand. I'm Sindhu Bloom. And I'm Scott McCandless. It is the week of December 11th, and this is your Monday briefing. The House and Senate are expected to wrap up for the year on Friday, and while a small number of scenarios could play out, we're so pleased to have Janice Mays with us to find out what she thinks. Janice, welcome. Thanks for having me. So Chairman Camp last week on a Policy on Demand episode conveyed remarks by Ways and Means Committee Chairman Jason Smith at a PwC conference that if there was going to be an extenders package, it wouldn't be in 2023. It's only been a few days, including a weekend, but has anything changed this morning? Nothing's changed. The leaders in Congress believe they'll actually get more done if they start with a fresh start in January. You you know it's been a tough year in the Congress. So I don't expect that to change. You know, the Senate might go into Friday or Saturday, but I expect them to be out by the end of this week. So Janice, if that means that here we are at the end of 2023, not expecting major legislative action until possibly January, how might you anticipate January to come together? And what could people expect when they come back after the first? At the moment, they plan to reconvene both houses on January 8th. And I think there are two possible paths forward, and I don't know which one to predict at the moment. But the first path is that that the Republicans and Democrats in both houses can resolve that top line number for appropriations, that big, here's the total appropriations, and then those subcommittees begin to take their separate segments of it and kind of parse it out into appropriation bills. If that's the case, they may be able to do some appropriation bills by January 19th, and the tax provisions at that point could possibly ride on those. So that's the positive scenario. The new speaker, though, has said they're not doing another continuing resolution. They're only going to work on these individual appropriation bills. So the tax writers are preparing for a second path that would still allow them to get the thing done. They wanted to get done at the end of the year with those TCJA provisions and the child tax credit. So they're trying to finish their negotiations in early January, right when they come back, socialize what they've decided, try to make it popular so people want to do it, and then potentially move a tax bill kind of unheard of at the moment, not our historic way. They've got a couple of ways to do that. They have the Taiwan anti-double tax bill that's passed both committees unanimously. So they could put it on that, start it in the House or the Senate. The Senate has other vehicles it could use to begin this action, move it, add those tax provisions to it, and try to just get through a tax bill at this point. I think the Senate initiating scenario is probably my favorite between those two. Those are possibilities, and they would very much try to get that done before January 19th, a pretty fast run here, so that if the government does shut down on January 19th, they're not denied action ever. So Janice, we've heard that Senator Cuipo thinks they can get 60 votes if the House moves Taiwan on suspension. Could you explain what suspension is and how the procedure might help? Suspension is a calendar in the House, a way you get to the House floor for debate without having to go through the Rules Committee. The Rules Committee is tough to get through right now with those extra Freedom Caucus members on it. So if you if you take a bill without going through the Rules Committee, you have to get two thirds of the House to vote for it for it to pass. Normally in the House, it's just a majority. So it makes a difference. It doesn't change what the Senate's doing. But, but you have this challenge to get something with more votes through the House than you normally do. I think it's possible. As I said, the bill was unanimous in both committees. The administration supports it. It's viewed as kind of an anti-China thing to some extent that pleases some members, certainly pro-Taiwan, that pleases other members. So I do think he's right. And finally, Janice, let's talk a little bit about the messaging you're conveying in your conversations with companies today. If we're not going to see legislative action before the end of the year, what actions or considerations might companies want to take? Haven't changed my message yet. If you want this done, you have to let them know it needs to be done. They continue to say to us, leadership staff continue to say, the leaders aren't hearing from members that these TCJA provisions are important. We've always had very broad support, but unfortunately, it's always been somewhat shallow on the hill. So business has to do the all points push. Members are home over the holidays. Visit them if you're your friends. 
you know, visit them when they come back. This needs to be C-suite action and it needs to be full bore. Everybody needs to be out pushing for it that wants it done. And the second part of that is small business. Small business has a January 15th estimated tax bill that a many of them can't pay at this moment. That's another reason to try to push for fast action. So keep doing that. If this doesn't happen first quarter of next year in this, this kind of context, I think in 2025, you're fighting to put it back in the law and that's hard to do. Janice, thank you so much for your insights and advice as always. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you. For our viewers, you'll find a link to the latest Week in Review with Pam Olson, as well as a conversation with Chairman Dave Camp on his interview with Ways and Means Chairman Jason Smith in the description of this episode. You will not want to miss it. And stay tuned for another Week in Review coming up this Friday. And we have a number of great episodes coming to you this week on AI, Pillar 2, and International Tax Guidance. But this will be our last Monday briefing until January. We appreciate the time you've spent with us and look forward to bringing you more insight and analysis in 2024. On behalf of the Policy on Demand team, have a happy holiday season and new year. Take care.